sexy as Jaguar, I am going to ride and I'm going to follow you. Because I am that creepy. <laughs> Yes. Oh, that is beautiful. Rakish. 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 Congratulations, you are graduating. How do you feel? Oh, damn. Okay, see, I was not trying to hurt the bird, I was just trying to hold it, caress it, you know, be one with the bird. So what is up, ladies and gentlemen? Right, that's okay here, bringing you another moto vlog. Yeah, I actually kind of want to touch on the subject of, uh, I, I get a lot of questions, whether it's on YouTube, Instagram, like in person, I, I had a couple people ask me at the meetup. I had, I get it I, like a lot at the bike meets and everything that I go to. So, uh, like, how reliable is this S1000? Like, how is the maintenance on it? Because you know, you think European bike, you think, oh wow, uh, that's kind of expensive to maintain. This bike is like literally in Japanese territory when it comes to prices on like maintenance and all that good stuff. So. I think I'm gonna start. With, I'm gonna touch the maintenance real quick, and I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you about how like reliable this bike has been for me. Um, when I got this bike, and I got it October 15th, 2013. It's a 20. It's a 2014. Uh, I paid. I want to say it was 18,250 or 18,750 out the door. I paid for it, and. Uh, maintenance schedule on it is well first off when you first get this bike they tell you you got the break the whole break-in period for uh, the first 600 miles you cannot go over I think it was 8,000 8, rpm I think it was six I can't remember uh, it's so long ago I want to say it was like 8,000 rpm you couldn't go over uh, it had like a limiter so if you ever tried to go over it it would like stop it you couldn't go any higher probably like, the first 600 miles and so uh, I took the bike down there when I raced 660 something I think it was and uh, they took a, a rev limiter off and it completely opened it up uh, it, <laughs> it's so much fun like, like literally like a kid in a candy store whenever you get that uh, rev limiter taken off so yeah that's actually your first like scheduled maintenance uh, right there is that 600 miles and then the next one is not until 6,000 which uh, I, I didn't even change the oil until then, actually. Um, I actually let it slide until 6,000, which is what they, they tell you to do. They say just wait until you're 6,000, and then when they change the oil, and then after that, change the oil like every 3,000. And I'm sitting at 10,615 uh, 10, right now. And so I need to change the oil of mine. That is the ugliest damn car. What the hell is that? Looks like a cross between a Mini and a Volkswagen. That thing is ugly as shit. No, I'm talking about the Smalls. I'm talking about that car, the gas station over there. That thing is ugly as what the hell. Yeah, so like maintenance wise, uh, my first, I think I paid 80 something dollars for my first uh, scheduled maintenance, which was 600 miles. I paid 80 something dollars. My second one was 6,000. I paid, I want to say I paid like 175. They went through the whole bike, they did all the fluids, they changed the oil, changed the filter, checked my tire pressure, all that stuff. Like, they did the, went the whole nine yards, tightened my chain, they did everything. Uh, and by the way, if you're in Georgia and you're ever looking at a BMW, go to uh, Blue Moon and Norcross. That's where I picked this up. I love the guys there. Steven is an awesome, awesome sales, uh, salesman. The, uh, their service guys are awesome. Uh, sometimes, like, literally, I've gone down there just to talk to the guys. I don't know how many times. I didn't even have to get any work done on my bike or anything. And it's just it's awesome to have a dealer like that. So yeah, if you're ever in Georgia, if you want to go look at a BMW, go to Blue Moon and Norcross, Georgia. It's, they are awesome. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. So, I don't know how much, I want to say it's going to cost me, I think I looked it up on the forums, and this uh, valve adjustment is going to cost me like 700 or something dollars. So, I mean, it's not too bad, honestly. It's really not that bad for a European bike. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail when it comes, I want to go. So yeah, talking about the reliability of this bike, um, I originally bought this bike for it to be my daily driver and just uh, my weekend fun go rip the mountains like have one bike. And it has served as that purpose more than I could like I honestly could have imagined. Like I said, I got 2618 miles on this bike. I haven't been able to ride it as much as I have been wanting to. I've had the bike for a year and a half now. And so 10,618 miles, it's not bad, but I mean, it's not like, holy shit, you ride every day, no matter what the weather's doing. Dude, I should totally get that. You see a six foot eight guy on one of those fucking things, yeah. So yeah, for this bike being a super bike, it has done more than I could like possibly ask. I've ridden in the snow, okay, I rode, I rode in the snow, I made a video, or I made a video, yeah, I think I made a video about that, uh, like a year ago at least, uh, riding in the snow, it hurt, it was painful as hell, but it, it was worth it, it was fun, uh, <laughs> and so, I did, I rode in the snow with it, I've rode in, no, I didn't ride in hail with it, thank god, if I rode in hail with it, I probably would have cried. So like, there's only like uh, I only have like maybe two gripes about this bike. One of them is the seat is horribly uncomfortable on a long ride, and I have honestly I don't think I've ever met somebody with this bike or heard somebody with this bike say that this they thought this stock seat was comfortable. I need to get a new seat. I've been looking at a Corbin seat. So and besides the seat being uncomfortable. This frame gets so high. So the frame gets insanely high. Like it's, I was in Atlanta, all right. The last time I went to Atlanta, oh my God. Oh. Uh, last time I went to Atlanta, the, uh, I was riding down there for about like 20 minutes. And uh, literally I would have to get to a stoplight and get off the bike that the frame got that hot. Well, I thought it was burning a hole in my jeans frame gets that hot but to me that is not a deal breaker because I don't ride in the city that much obviously as you can see right now I ride in back roads a lot I ride in the mountains a lot so I like I try to avoid the city as much as I can I love going to the city and take cool pictures and stuff like that but other than that I try to avoid it at all costs but yeah the, like reliability on this bike though I've heard, I really have not heard any people having like issues with this bike. Um, the the riding position is probably the most comfortable on a sport bike or excuse me super bike that I have ever uh, like seen. I rode my buddy's R1 home from the dealership the day he got it, and it is so it was so aggressive. Like I just I like the fact that you're sitting like okay, on the R1. His uh, 13, I want to say, and you sit here, like the seat position's like that. The seat position on my bike is like this, as opposed to being like that. It is, it, it is so much more comfortable on this bike, yet the seat on the R1 felt so much more comfortable than this one does. <laughs> so it's like a little hand. And I'm actually, uh, <laughs> I will be, or I have been, I'm not gonna say I will be because I'm not 100% sure yet, but uh, I was looking at bikes for a friend of mine last night and I came across a 2012 1199 Panigale S, all black, like a gloss black, not the matte black, it's a gloss black. Look, I don't know, I've never seen a gloss black one, so I don't know if it's like somebody got it painted or if it's like a limited edition color or something, but for, I think it was like 16,000, maybe it was 14,000, I can't remember, it was one of those. And it had like maybe 4,200 miles on it, if that. And I've been wanting a Panigale for a, a real long time. So yeah, if you see, like I said again, like I said last video, follow me on Instagram, that is where you see 
all of my, like, that's, that is my go-to whenever I want to say something, whenever I want to tell you guys about something. So go follow my Instagram. Uh, I'll put the link in the description again, as always. And, uh, yeah, I will be making a lot more videos. Don't worry about that. I know I get, I got a lot of messages on Instagram, email, um, Twitter, of people asking me when the hell I'm going to make videos again. Uh, I want to give a shout out to one guy. I think his name's like I don't say his name's Igor Franklin. I think I think that's your name, man. If I'm not pronouncing that right, that's my fault. But yeah, dude, you have been like writing me, no homo. You have been writing me to get to make videos uh, again. So now that I have time to do it, I've made the time to do it. I'm here to stay. I will be making videos, and uh, I cannot wait for this next. Uh, for this next year, this next year's build up for the next motor vlogger meetup. And I will see you guys on my next moto vlog. See you guys later. Goodbye.